Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for rejoining us for this AMA. I guess we might just get uh, a lot of friends and colleagues. They're fantastic. Uh, our moderator has done me the huge favor of uh, sending me a little checklist of things that I should touch on. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to be touching Kevin's thing. Um, I think that's the way to way to say it. Um, but up here, reflection on 2023. Uh, can I share some of the key highlights of 2023? 2023 was a very, very interesting year for us. It's a, it felt like a very long time and a very short time all at once. The key thing that happened for for Alki Labs in 2023 was that we started getting really, really significant traction with retail. So much traction with retail that it forced us to completely rethink what we were doing with our previous application efforts. Some of you uh, know us from our early application efforts under the brand Matterless, where we wanted to build AR pets uh, and AR games. Um, but we got such traction with the retail, such interest with the retail and realized that the market opportunity were so big that we reoriented our application efforts to focus entirely on capturing the, the retail market. It was a huge transition for us as a company. We haven't thrown away our old code, but it is uh, on pause for now because we really want to capture these retail opportunities. And we built a couple of really, really fantastic pilot applications that we are now piloting in North America, in Europe, in Asia. We have uh, pilots coming up in the Middle East and in Australia. We're really, really excited. We're talking with many of the world's very biggest retailers. Uh, and we have many, many pilots uh, being lined up for this spring. Doing that, positioning retail this way, uh, made us think deeply about are the core utilities of the post mesh as a protocol our starting hypothesis in 2021 building the post mesh uh, was we wanted to really lower the barrier to entry for making very simple ad hoc multiplayer experiences those of you that have been following us for a while will remember a very powerful instant calibration demo where people could just hop into a shared ar session and in 2021 during the uh, the height of the metaverse craze. We had a very strong hypothesis at the time that a lot of people would want to be developing augmented reality apps. Uh, but that didn't quite. So not that many people joined us in building augmented reality. So even though we're very happy that over 100 projects have signed up uh, to use the instant calibration SDK, that's nowhere near as much traction as we're getting with, with the retail stuff. So what that means is we're starting to understand what the core value proposition of the post mesh is. It's not the spontaneous ad hoc, hop on, hop off multiplayer, but persistent AR experiences uh, in inside spaces that aren't serviced by the positioning technologies of our competitors. I hope you all saw the fantastic video we did of how we did indoor navigation for the Tech Week in Hong Kong. That was something that I believe only Alki Labs could have uh, pulled off and that only the post mesh could have pulled off. And this is what we are realizing. I put it, for those of you that follow me on, on Twitter, on Medium, I put it in a single sentence this way. Critical businesses require spatial AI. Spatial computer. Hey, hey. Uh, did someone have a question? I, I heard a voice. Is there was there a question? <laughs> a burst power. Did you have a question? All right. I'll just keep going. I'll just keep going. So, uh, we just had our internal applications demo day today. Uh, every two weeks, uh, the whole company gets together to show the latest developments of our applications. And today was a particularly exciting day because a lot of the things that we have been building are finally colliding into one big cohesive uh, product that we will be demoing publicly to you guys very soon. 
But essentially what we're doing is we're bringing the power of the post mesh to AI. And this is really, really exciting. To tell you what it is we're doing, um, realize that AI, like LLMs, they only understand digital things, of course. They have no way of understanding the physical world. And what that means is that e-commerce benefits from AI a lot more than retail. Understand that, of course, retailers are going to be very, very worried about this. Everyone wants to get access to AI. The AI will very soon be both, both the best and the cheapest worker. For AI to be able to help at the front lines of retail, at the front lines of retail, they need to have spatial awareness. Physical businesses require spatial AI, and spatial AI requires spatial computing. So we are now uh, putting the finishing touches of a really cool prototype, an AI store manager that uses the post mesh to look around the store and make recommendations for the human staff on what tasks that they should perform. We're really, really excited about it. Our pilots are really, really excited about it. And I can't wait to show you guys soon. So in retrospect, 2023 was the year that we realized that the post mesh is not, at least in the short term, going to be about ad hoc AR gaming as our uh, initial hypothesis was, but it's a much more enterprise use case about bringing artificial intelligence and persistent augmented reality as a communications tool to indoor places like malls, conferences, retail environments, and hospitals. And today, some of our team members met up with a government that uh, asked us, would it be possible to put your lighthouses on the street signs of our city? So that uh, the positioning service of the post mesh can be a public utility in that city and we'll be following up with them on that soon so we are getting traction all the way from the government level down to indie developers down and we're super super excited and proud of that um, and uh, going back to kevin's questions here he said we often see the final products but what are some of the behind the scenes developments that contributed to the success of alki labs in 2023 that's a tough uh, question. Uh, we try to be very open with everything we do. So it's not intuitively clear to me with like what things are behind the scenes. So it's more about what did we forget to tell you guys? Uh, but one of the biggest things uh, that's happening now very, very soon that we're super excited about, I think many of you have seen our, our lovely office with the demo space behind these shelves where we have a fake grocery store. Just a, a couple of days or weeks uh, around mid-February, we are getting an entire floor of this skyscraper building. And uh, it's the 10th floor of this building. We're calling it the Level 10 Research Center. And it's going to be a huge, beautiful demo space of what the post mesh can do for smart cities, smart spaces, IoT, robotics. Uh, in fact, uh, we just demoed internally today our, a very cool robot demo that has to do with this AI I mentioned. I look forward to showing you that soon. You just need to polish it a little bit more because internal demos uh, don't have this beautiful design as the kind of stuff I want to show you guys, but we'll be, we'll be showing you, you soon. Uh, and what happened behind the scenes there is, of course, we've been doing a lot of, of, of uh, networking around Hong Kong, building up momentum for people to want to collaborate together, to work more closely together. And then through the fantastic support of Baboon, uh, one of our most active and, and beloved backers, he gave us access to this space. We're incredibly, incredibly thankful to Baboon uh, for, for providing us this space. It's going to be a game changer for the spatial computing industry and a game changer for Hong Kong, and definitely a game changer for Alki Labs and the Post Mesh. Uh, so this is something that we have been uh, working on behind the scenes, and we'll be opening up the Level 10 Research Center in about a month. Really, really excited about that. Our vision for 2024 is very much uh, showing the world how the post mesh can be used uh, to bring augmented reality, uh, so, sorry, uh, artificial intelligence and augmented reality into physical spaces. Setting up this level 10 research center and the much, much bigger demo space that we're doing on the 10th floor, uh, together with the uh, a lot of the web, web 2 marketing uh, that we've been doing, uh, will help spread awareness to the wider world of the power of deep in networks, the power of 
of spatial computing and how blockchain is being used uh, to allow this kind of privacy preserving protocol for positioning. Uh, we're really excited to be bringing more mainstream attention uh, to this industry. Uh, we think it's one of our big jobs to bring new eyeballs into this ecosystem. Uh, I know some in the community argue with me about this sometimes, think I'm maybe a little bit naive, but I think what I can what I can do for the blockchain community is to bring outsiders in. And this is very much our focus. How can we bring outsiders into this space and uh, legitimize uh, this technology and show them that the use cases are real? It's not just profile pictures. It's not just funny money. Niels, it's real. Sorry, in so, sorry in for interruption. Um... When we share our videos, when we share our videos, then the uh, space is full with 24 people, and there are now people uh, want to enjoy. They can't enjoy. So um, I guess we need to put right. our cameras off. All right. Hi, Oscar. I'll miss your face. All right. So we, people should be able to to get in yeah, here now. I guess. Sorry. Continue, please. At 2024, uh, we will be pushing the narrative of how spatial computing, AI, and DPIN are naturally colliding and how the post-mesh is the best example of these three industry-changing trends. Uh, we are very excited about it. The Web2 Media is very excited about it. Uh, just yesterday, uh, I was interviewed uh, by two different uh, uh, Web2 journalists uh, about this messaging. And uh, early my morning, uh, in a few days, I will be talking with Forbes uh, about this as well. So we're getting a lot of mainstream Web2 attention, and we're really, really excited and proud, uh, proud of that. Uh, we think that this is really one of the things that we can uh, do for the blockchain community is, is help bring outside attention into the very, uh, very meaningful mission of decentralization. Uh, Update on retail and airport pilots. Kevin wants me to give uh, an update. Uh, we have an implementation live right now that is not under NDA, which is unusual for us. But if you find yourself in Hong Kong airport, if you find yourself in Hong Kong airport, you should visit the premium plaza lounges at that airport and you will be able to experience our technology live. Uh, that's live there right now. Uh, and we're really, really excited about it. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people have have seen it. Uh, not the actual AR experience, but online, we have been been promoting it uh, widely. Uh, and uh, the the people in the lounge are playing with it, having fun with it. We're uh, showcasing the interoperability of the protocol with many different applications running inside the same domain. So if you find yourself in Hong Kong Airport, uh, here's an implementation that we can openly talk about. It's not under NDA. Under NDA, uh, we are doing pilots with several of, of the world's larger retailers now, uh, representing several thousand stores each uh, for those pilots. Of course, we don't pilot in thousands of stores at once. We typically pilot in just one or three locations, something like that. Uh, we think the pilots are going very well. We're very excited. And uh, hopefully we should be able to make some, some formal announcements uh, soon. Uh, we just attended the NRF retail conference uh, in New York just a few days ago, and we left that conference with 180 new leads. So we're super, super excited about that. Uh, the largest of those leads is an Asian chain uh, representing around 20,000 stores. So uh, really, really excited about how well our business development team has been doing at NRF, and the tremendous uh, response that we that we are that we are getting, uh, and then uh, the next question from Kevin is, Kevin is uh, spatial computing and Apple Vision Pro. Kevin says spatial computing is a hot topic, and the launch of Apple Vision Pro has garnered significant attention. Could you elaborate on the latest developments in spatial computing and what Apple Vision Pro brings to the table? Uh, if you follow XR Twitter. You will see that there's a lot of debating about why does Apple not call it a VR headset? Why do they call it a spatial computer? What's going on with that? And I, I think that Apple is actually quite genius in not describing it as a VR headset and describing it as a spatial computer. 
because they're educating uh, the population about the big shift that's about to happen. Your typical VR headset only runs one experience at a time. It's about being immersed in something. It's an entertainment device. The Apple Vision Pro lets you run several different applications at the same time, just as your computer. A spatial computer is a computer that is aware of the space around it. What Apple is telling us by saying that the Apple Vision Pro is a spatial computer, is they're saying, hey, listen, this thing is going to replace your laptop. It's going to replace your desktop. They see in the future, maybe this will even replace your phone. This is a computer. It's not a headset. It's not a toy. It's not a console. It's not competing uh, with the vision of things like the Quest 3 that position themselves very much as an entertainment device. Apple believes that spatial computing is the future of computing full stop. It's a spatial computer. That being said, we're still very early in this, and the Apple Vision Pro, even though it's a very cool device, uh, has a couple of limitations that makes it not that interesting for what we are doing with our applications. Apple Vision Pro is designed for uh, sitting in one place, not for moving around a big physical space. Uh, so we are unlikely to be doing any retail stuff with the with the Vision Pro. However, we benefit very much from the Vision Pro because a lot of uh, Web2 journalists have been reaching out to us for comment what the what uh, this uh, means for the industry, etc. If you go to uh, www.augmented dot vision. Uh, that's my private blog. Uh, I put out my very first post uh, this weekend, I believe, explaining a little bit about why spatial computing is so important in the AI race and uh, what the Apple Vision Pro kind of tells us about how Apple sees the future of AI. Uh, I disagree with the Bloomberg analyst that after trying uh, trying some of these, these new LLMs saying that Apple is falling behind in the AI race. I don't believe that at all. And you will see why I believe that companies like Apple and Tesla might actually have a very significant lead in artificial intelligence if you read that blog post. Uh, next question is the token channel conversation. Yesterday, there was an interesting conversation in the token channel. Could you share some insights into what was discussed? Absolutely. The summary is this. Uh, in 2021-22, we did pre-sales of the Aoki token uh, to a couple of institutions and communities that were excited about what we were building and wanted to get involved. And as part of, of those pre-sales, uh, there was a, a time limit set for when this token should be launched. We have always said that we didn't want to launch the token until we could surely clearly show that the token has utility. One of the things that we didn't want to borrow from the Web3 playbook of the 21-22 era was to just write a white paper, mint a token, and use those proceeds uh, to build something in the future. We wanted to build something first and launch the token after. And that means it's taken a long time for us to get to where we are, and the SAFTs are now maturing. In fact, by the end of this month, uh, our contracts say that we have to launch. And some of our uh, of our backers and supporters don't really want us to launch now. Uh, they have their own uh, theories and hypotheses as to why it might be better for the protocols community uh, if we launch later and uh, do a launch strategy that is more focused on getting on centralized exchanges. Our default plan to be compliant with our with our contracts and and not expose ourselves to any potential uh, conflict uh, with our backers is to launch uh, this next Friday uh, on Trader Joe, uh, which is a decentralized exchange for the Avalanche community. Uh, we are of course building on Avalanche, and uh, we feel pretty confident. Doing this, we have a very strong long-term belief in what we're uh, building, um, but some backers think it would be optimal, better for us, 
if we launched it later. So we now have the situation where we have to see if the backers can kind of negotiate with each other and agree with each other if we should move this launch date or not. But from our point of view, uh, the people that say that we should launch are legally in the right because that's what the contract says. So unless everyone agrees, uh, we want to do what it says on the contract. We, we, we think that that's the way we should conduct ourselves uh, as a business. Uh, but we are trying to see if the, the backers will agree with each other to do some other launch strategy. We're very open to trying another launch strategy. Um, at the end of the day, you know, we want to keep building, keep showing the world what the, this protocol can do. Uh, and I'm not personally concerned about which launch strategy we do. I think no matter how we launch, uh, the next couple of years is going to be a very, very interesting time for us. And I think uh, our community will keep growing as they see the fantastic uh, things that we are building. Um, that said, I've, uh, I think I've addressed all of Kevin's questions and I'd be very open uh, to or happy to just open the floor uh, and see if anyone has any questions. Hi, by the way, Berenice, good to see you again. Uh, glad to see you're still hanging out in the community. Uh, oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> Thanks. Um, um, I'm currently traveling, so uh, that's why I'm muted. Um, but um, um, nice to see you here all. Nice to see you. Oh, I see now that um, uh, I see now that the uh, our questions in the AMA channel here. I didn't see this. We have a first question from Mihail. Why is the initial token launch price the same as the pre-sale price uh, we paid uh, two years ago? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not the guy uh, responsible for the, the launch strategy. Uh, I have heard both uh, 120 and 150. Um, one big difference, Mihail, between putting money in two years ago and uh, putting in money now is two years ago, it was able you were able to get in with very large allocations. And there's no guarantee that you can get in with a large allocation at the, the TGE. Um, we want to launch the, the price, uh, I imagine, uh, somewhere healthy that the, the market will tolerate. But I am not the person setting the price. And honestly, I don't know what the latest word is on the, the launch price. Uh, but I understand it's somewhere uh, close to the, the initial price. Uh, if we list it, you know, our FTV is very high compared to many other projects right now. Um, so this is something we have to, to take into consideration. Uh, Atomic Sushi asks, can we create Discord events when AMAs are planned so everyone checking in on the server can see the time and channel it will be hosted in? That's a great suggestion, and I'm sure that uh, that Chris and, and Kevin uh, will will take that on board. Yes. Uh, Igor, asks, oh, sorry. Go on. Sorry. Igor asks, which are the other investors' prices? So our backers uh, pre-bought the token. Uh, the latest ones bought at 120. Uh, if I remember correctly, the ones before that uh, bought at 95, and some of them bought at 80. And uh, I, I I don't fully remember, but it's 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 in that range. Um, I think the the the, the pre-sale one was at 80 million, uh, I believe. Uh, Mihail is asking when is the TGE taking place? It was planned to be in Q2 2022, so that's almost a two years delay. Investing for people who invested in 24 months after TG, so two more years after TG. Uh, I believe I already addressed that question, uh, Mihail. Uh, the TG is probably taking place on Friday, although there are some backers that are trying to negotiate that we should do it uh, later than that. Hey, I posted a question in the the voice chat. Um comments it, it was a little lengthy so i don't i'm not gonna ask you to read it i'll, I'll too long didn't read it though uh, just i was thinking the the greatest asset that a lot of web3 brands have is their their community you know like the board api club and, and all the nft projects that's that's their big thing they would be nothing without all of these people backing them on social media and whatnot um so you obviously you guys don't really need that you have a, a cool product and lots of people are interested in it 
but you also have this community. So have you guys considered how you could leverage the, the community that you have across the internet to help bolster you even more? Uh, yes, and we're learning a lot here. Like uh, some of you will know uh, and uh, either love me for it or hate me for it, but I'm, I'm, I'm not a, a crypto native. This is my first uh, Web3 rodeo, and there's a lot that I need to learn about how things are done. And I'm a very skeptical learner. You know, I want to see data. I want to I want to really study how things work. And that means it takes a while for me to really figure out how these things work. Uh, it's very clear that community can be both very powerful and sometimes also quite destructive. And we uh, are learning and experimenting how to uh, make use of the community in good ways. Some of the great advice we've been getting recently is that to uh, make our community bigger and also uh, reach more of the blockchain development community. Uh, we're very interested in, in influencing uh, the wider blockchain community and, and the conversations we are having to, to move the industry forward, that we should uh, onboard uh, KOLs as uh, advisors and ambassadors to help us reach uh, these communities and developers uh, that I don't you know, natively know how to reach. So we are starting that now We're in the process of um, uh, preparing a, uh, a community slash KOL round uh, where these people will be able to, to uh, buy some of the utility token in advance as well uh, and start representing the project and help us, uh, help us reach out. Uh, it's been, uh, that's been a, a long and tricky journey for us because uh, there are some unfortunate realities about how uh, marketing has been done in the wider crypto community over the last two years uh, that is not legal in all jurisdictions and uh, certainly not ethical in, in my book. And it was always very important for us that if we work uh, with any kind of influencer that this is fully disclosed, that people understand that you know, we have a financial relationship with this person, etc. And for a long time, it was very actually very hard for us uh, to find KOLs that were willing to uh, like really go on the record as having a financial relationship with us. Uh, the the meta game of Web three marketing uh, was doing illegal marketing, and since we believe that we are building something that is very important for civilization and that we believe in very much. We don't want to expose the project to the risk of breaking the law. We try very hard to be compliant because we assume that one day we are going to be called in front of Congress, et cetera, uh, to explain um, ourselves and what we're building. And we want to be able to do that with, uh, with a straight back and unflinching gaze and, and say that we have built this uh, for civilization. And uh, we would lose our credibility if we were breaking the law doing that. So uh, we've been slow, but we're getting there. We are onboarding like-minded KOLs now that understand uh, the importance of what we're building and how passionate we are about building it and that we don't want to be uh, breaking the law. Um, and I, I think this year, uh, our community is going to be growing a lot. I mean, just over the... Uh, the last month or two, the amount of incoming traffic here uh, to our Discord has been significantly significantly higher than in previous periods. And you may not see uh, the growth as quickly on our Twitter because we very meticulously uh, block uh, accounts that we think are bots because they hurt us in the algorithm. Uh, but our numbers keep ticking up, and uh, especially in the Web2 world. The Web2 world is paying more and more attention to what we're doing. And I think... Uh, this spring is the start of Web3 really catching on to what we're doing as well. But we are always open to hearing your advice as a community about how to reach the wider crypto community. Uh, I hope you've noticed that we're easy to reach and, and very open to talk to. Uh, we certainly have strong principles that we believe in, and we, we might argue with you, but we're always very, very happy to hear your advice and your opinions. Yeah. <laughs>
a great. question from Igor. Uh, I appreciate Thank you. the transparency you guys are going for. That's great. It's uh, it's stressful at times, you know, seeing that a lot of our, our peers in the industry uh, have an easier time because they're playing fast and loose. And, you know, of course, they get a, a lot of short term gains uh, gains uh, by doing that. And, you know, some of our. I don't know if I should say cynical or, or whatever, but, you know, some of our backers. Uh, take the attitude of, you know, like everyone is doing it, everyone is doing it you're a sucker if you don't do it uh but i don't like i don't think that's an excuse you know like just because everyone starts looting doesn't mean that we should start looting uh, that that's how civilization falls apart we want to be compliant we want to work with the government we want to work with regulation and make sure that our conduct does not threaten this protocol because if we lose as a protocol the alternative is centralized visual positioning and i think that's very, very bad outcome for civilization. Uh, Igor is asking, uh, do you know someone that is working on the marketing side? If not, which is your plan uh, about this? Uh, I think I just uh, addressed this, Igor. We, we have a, a newly onboarded PR firm that we're working with. Uh, we have tried a couple of different marketing firms uh, and marketing advisors. Uh, we've stopped working with many marketing advisors uh, also because uh, they wanted us to break the law, um, but we have hired Chris now, who I think is doing a, a really, really good job. Has helped us reach a lot more people, um, and is very willing to work with us. Sorry, what? Who did you have a question, or or did you forget to mute? I, I am gonna. Disconnect blue. Yeah. There we go. Uh, how many people are working full time on the project currently? We are 40 people working full time, Mihail. 40 people on full time uh, contract uh, on, 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 on full time contracts. And we have a runway until about uh, the end of January next year. Sorry, I just need to uh, quit my Telegram so I don't get any more notifications. Uh, there are questions appearing in two different chats here, so I'm I'm uh, I'm bouncing back and forth here. And Nick, I see that if if the launch is postponed, uh, that's not in your interest. I understand that. I I think there might be compromises we can do where we launch the test net and we start rewarding uh, we start rewarding the node runners more uh, but of course uh, you won't be able to trade that on an exchange yet uh, but hopefully there's some kind of compromise there that could make everyone kind of happy where the node runners uh, can still earn rewards on the test net but the token is not listed yet of course we care a lot about you guys the community that are that are hosting these things uh, of course uh, we just need to make sure uh, that that everyone is happy. It's it, I'm going to be honest. You know, it's 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 uh, it's difficult at times because the, the backers don't want the same thing. You can see the result in the the poll. You know that the, it's people have very very different opinions about what the right thing to do is. And for us, uh, as as newcomers learning from this, we we read all of this very carefully and we discuss it very carefully in the office. Uh, we're super, super thankful for the uh, amount of engagement we got in the token channel yesterday. It was very, very educational. Thank you to everyone that shared your opinion in there. Um, keep talking to us. Keep giving us advice. I know I may sound standoffish uh, sometimes, but I, I'm genuinely here to learn. Right, I think uh, maybe we are uh, the questions for for today. Um, thank you all for for joining me. Uh, are there any more questions? I see. Uh, yeah, no. Igor and uh, Zulu are typing now. I'll 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 wait a few more minutes, maybe. Um, 
it's been a, a really, really uh, exciting start to the year, I have to say. Uh, stick around. We'll be showing you a lot of really cool stuff in the Discord. We'll be showing you a lot of really cool stuff on the Discord. Uh, we will be focusing a lot more on Twitter than on Telegram uh, for our Web3 outreach. Uh, so the best way to interact with us uh, will, will be through the Twitter. Uh, you should definitely follow uh, at Postmesh and at Alki Labs. Uh, feel free to give me a follow as well. I'm at Broodsugar. Uh, EPF, uh, we are not charging uh, for the protocol at this time. We are piloting without charging. So the, the revenue is a cool $0. We are, we, are not, we are not charging for it. Reason we are not charging for it is because we raised at a very, very high valuation. And uh, the way uh, that we need to position ourselves for the Series A is if we have revenue already, then our valuation will be counted as a multiple on the revenue. This is a lesson I learned from my previous startup. Uh, at my previous startup, I was offered uh, the highest seed stage valuation of any Asian startup at the time. Uh, I declined it because we were pre-product at the time. And I thought once I built the product, I should be able to get an even better valuation. I launched the product and did $130,000 of revenue uh, in the first 30 days. And that lowered our valuation because then they could uh, look at the revenue and give us a multiple on that. So strategically, DPF, we are not charging anything yet uh, because that will impact our ability to raise. Uh, a brood sugar atomic sushi is um, uh, when I was uh, a teenager, I was dating an art student. And that art student was tasked to make an album cover in school. And she was very into J-pop. And she made a fake J-pop album called Brud Sugar, which I realize now is kind of racist, actually. Uh, but she made this album Brud Sugar. Uh, and I read it as Brood Sugar. And I thought, man, that sounds really cool and metal and philosophical. And I, I, I really liked it. So I, I just stole Brood Sugar as my handle. Um, Dulu, uh, I would like to see an update to the team's communication in Discord, especially as the community grows. Pinging at everyone in public chat channels can be seen as unprofessional and difficult to find them. I scrolling up through who knows how many messages. Uh, perhaps a community announcement channel for those pings. Other than that, uh, excited to see what comes. Zulu, that's great advice. Thank you very much. Uh, we will take that to heart. We definitely don't want to be spamming you or make the, the Discord difficult to navigate. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Igor asked, when will we be decide about the TG and the listing? There is a deadline. Uh, the, as I said, the default outcome is we launch on Friday because that's what the contracts say. Now, of course, some of the people with contracts don't want us to do that. But we have to follow the contracts unless everyone agrees that uh, let's wait anyhow. So most likely we will be listing on Friday unless the backers come together and agree to postpone. Uh, and we would want that in writing. So uh, early next week, uh, we will see if if the backers can agree to sign an extension. If they don't sign an extension, uh, we will be launching on Friday. News in the launch uh, chat. Ulfring is asking, are there still any other ways to get a token before TG other than running a node? Uh, there should be uh, a way to uh, perhaps participate in the, the community and KOL round, uh, potentially. Um, but I am not the guy organizing that. Uh, that's Santri. I don't know if Santri is on this call anymore or if he's ready to comment on that. Uh, but let us get back to you early next week uh, about what. Uh, or Santri, did you want to comment now? No, I, I was about to say that we we would like to uh, discuss this publicly uh, early next week, rather rather than right now. Yeah. But if so, uh, the opportunity uh, is there, yes. The in essence for your question, the opportunity is there. Yeah. Yeah, the opportunity is 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 uh, there in some. Uh, some form we need to, to finalize what that's going to look like and we're working with our uh, advisors to figure that out 
Uh, Atomic Sushi uh, says, concerning Zulo's note above, I've worked with several communities, some large and some small, mostly in Discord. If anyone would like, I'm happy to schedule a call and share what I've learned about Web3 community management or Discord structure with someone on the team just to be helpful. I imagine Chris would be very happy to get your feedback on that. Uh, Atomic Sushi, Chris is the guy uh, that you should force your help on. <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Uh, Atomic is a legend, I highly suggest. <laughs> Right, Chris. Uh, if you're still on the call, Chris, uh, let's let's uh, let's uh, oh, milk atomic for a, a follow up here. Really on that. It. Sure. <coughs> you. Uh, that's very kind of you to offer atomic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I agree. Said uh, says I mentioned yesterday about more airdrops. Can I tell you more? No, I cannot tell you more yet. But of course, we will be airdropping more. We're probably going to be setting uh, around 5% of the total supply as an airdropping budget. But we, we are still planning on how to spend that airdrop budget. Uh, but somewhere on the order of 5% of total supply will be set, uh, will be set aside for airdrops. Uh, are we planning to maybe do some airdrop incentivating the test net? This could be great marketing. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, we're planning to do that. Uh, as I said, uh, we're probably going to put around 5% of the total supply aside for uh, test nets. Uh, we were given the advice to not put more than 7% aside for the test net, uh, but we were also given the advice that since we have a very high FDV, uh, maybe we should not go as high as 7%. Right now we're thinking around five. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be finalizing that uh, before TGE and uh, have a, a public airdropping strategy. So you, you know at least how much of the total supply is gonna be airdropped. I'm glad to see so many people uh, have joined this call. Uh, I think our last AMA, we were just like uh, eight people or something. It, it's it's lovely to see the, the community growing. And I am so thankful for all of you uh, that are giving us advice. Of course, it's great that you're asking questions, but that you're giving us advice, is that's, that's really fantastic. Thank you. I think uh, there are no more questions anymore, uh, Niels. Okay. And uh, I'm uh, beautiful Hong Kong. It's uh, 6.45 p.m. here. I'm uh, going <laughs> to go back to work. Uh, I'll be working all weekend uh, to get ready for, for the TG. Uh, I'll tell you guys, I barely slept the last three days, uh, partially because uh, my baby is teething, but also because I'm so manic right now. You know, I just need to keep building. I'm really, really excited to show you what it is we've been working on and how uh, DPIN and spatial computing and AI are colliding to make this beautiful thing we call the post mesh. 2024 is going to be a fantastic fucking year. Thank you so much for being here. I'll catch you all soon. And thank you, Niels, for sharing your insights today. Thank you very much. And guys, thank you for enjoying today and see you the next time.